Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for this exclusive training on power of attorney. Uh, this one, we're going to discuss how to fill out a power of attorney in the state of Illinois. Now, you may have to check the state that you're in. Some states uh, make it illegal for you to uh, create the documents for the clients, uh, but I do suggest that you check your state just to be on the safe side with everything. But here I am going to show you how to create a power of attorney form uh, for your client. Now this is a fantastic service. The reason is a lot of clients do not know where to get a power of attorney form. As you can see at the end of the name power of attorney, they feel that they need to go to an attorney to get this form, which translates into costing a lot of money being very expensive but in reality no they do not need to go to an attorney to get a power of attorney form so i'm going to show you guys real quick how to create a power of attorney form so let's get right into it so the first thing you guys have to understand are the main players in the power of attorney you have your principal the principal is the person that has the power okay and the agent is the person that is going to be receiving the power. So let me give you a quick example. Let's just say I am sick, right? God forbid, you know, I, I have a terminal illness or I'm just sick and I can't get around the way I would like to. I would be considered the principal. Now, my wife, the person that I would want to handle all of my financial affairs would be the agent. So. I, the principal, am giving over the power to my wife, which is going to be the agent, okay? I'm the principal who's sick. She's the agent that's going to be handling all of my financial affairs. Now, in some states, it allows you to have a secondary agent, which is also called the successor. So the successor could be my brother. If anything happens to my wife, my brother would step in to the mix, which would be the secondary agent or successor. Okay, uh, so let's go right into it. Well, let's just say I am. Let's let's just keep it rolling. I'm the principal. Who is this power for? Tiger Toledo, right? And then we'll put in an address. All right? Then you'll hit next. Now again, I use eForms. eForms has had a very successful uh, track record with me. I've been using eForms probably for the last year and a half. None of the documents has ever, ever been rejected by a financial institution or a bank. You know, so eForms is very, very solid with me. Um, <clears throat> so as you guys can see here, it says, who will be receiving powers to act on the principal's behalf, which would be my wife, right? So I'll put wife Toledo. And then we'll just put in the address here, right? And then we'll hit next. Now it's going to ask, do I want a secondary agent, you know, a, a successor? I'm going to put no. But if I did put yes, of course, you can see where you would put all the information in. The same way you did for the rest of the stuff. You hit no and then hit next. Now, what I like to tell the clients is in this section, there's a section that I'm going to be asking you yes or no questions. All I need you to do is answer the questions with a yes or a no. If you would like me to clarify a little bit for you or elaborate a little bit more, I can do that. Just ask me. But for the most part, I need you to answer yes or no. Okay. And right down here, you guys can see where it allows you to, you know, go into more detail. So if they say uh, banking, what does that mean? Banking? Well, to receive to receive and deposit funds with any financial institution and to withdraw funds by check or otherwise to pay for goods, services, and any other personal and business expenses. As you guys can see, it gets very elaborative and it should give people a very good indication of what that clause means. So 
then I'll just go back into it and be like, okay, will the agent, which is you, or in my situation, which is my wife, have the right to access the principal, which is myself, bank accounts? Yes. Most of the times they say yes, because it's a financial power of attorney. Now, one thing I want to mention also, the durable financial power of attorney is the best power of attorney. The reason why I say that is because if the person becomes incapacitated, it still allows the person to take care of their financial affairs. Okay. So the durable financial power of attorney, I always recommend that's, that's the very best power of attorney out there. Okay. So taxes, will the agent have the power to pay and file taxes? Yes. Now, you know, this is your conversation that you're having with your client over the phone. Uh, it can either be with the family member, uh, the person that's receiving the power, which is the agent, or it can actually be the principal that you're talking to. But either way, you're going to notarize the documents anyway, and you're going to be there. Uh, second one is about safe deposit boxes. I really don't say the titles. I just go right into this section here and say, Will the agent be able to have access to any safe deposit boxes? Yes. Will the agent be able to make loans, promissory notes, or borrow money on the principal's behalf? Yes. Will the agent have power over government benefits? Yes. Will the agent have the power of the principal's retirement plans? Yes. Will the agent have power over the principal's real estate holdings? Yes. Will the agent be able to buy, sell prop, personal property? Yes. Will the agent have the power to buy, sell, or exchange stocks or bonds? Stocks and bonds. Yes. Will the agent have the power to handle the principal's commodities and options? Yes. Will the agent have the power to make gifts? Yes. Will the agent have power over principal's business, if any? Yes. Will the agent have power over any insurance policies or annuities? Yes. Will the agent have power over principal's estates, trust, or other beneficial interests? Yes. Will the agent have power over claims and litigation? Yes. Will the agent have power to assist with principal's family obligations? Yes. Will there be any special instructions added to the power of attorney no when will this power of attorney begin immediately or upon incapacitation immediately now usually in this section right here this is where um, it could be a yes or no so it's very important that you pay attention to the person um, so when I ask the question will the agent be reimbursed for any expenses that occurred during their time as agent. Now, because the person probably have been ill for a while, um, their family member may have been paying bills, like let's just say a sister have been paying the brother's bill for the last four months. And the money is there. The, the person, the brother can reimburse the sister for the money. It's just that at the present time, they never had a power of attorney done. So therefore, the sister has been paying on the bills out of her own pocket. So just pay attention and be and take your time with this section here where you say, will the agent be reimbursed for any expenses that occurred during their time as agent? No. Will the agent be entitled to reasonable compensation for their duties? Sometimes they think about it and usually they'll say no, but definitely pay attention uh, to what the client says because that this is where the area changes. OK, 
okay so you'll hit next and then of course does the principal agree to have this power of attorney signed in front of a notary public and one witness and of course they have to say yes and then you would save it once you do that I would download it to my phone or my e or my uh, personal hard drive and then from that point I would send them the documents after I'm done with them but always collect the payment once you complete the document say hey according to the company I cannot send the documents over to you until we collect the payment because it's already been drafted and they usually understand they're very understanding about that they're like okay I get it you don't want to send me the document and then I run off with it and don't pay you anything so you could always say company policy requires me to collect payment before I send out the documents okay how much is it again forty seven dollars boom you take the payment over the phone send it over to them they can proofread it make sure everything is spelled correct and they can easily say oh it's not wife it's wifey you know add a y to it and then you can make the correct changes but it's very easy for you to go back and make those changes um, now if you're giving it to them pro bono and you're not charging them for the service um, you can always let them know uh, that you're going to bring the documents with so you can print it out yourself and then take the documents with you when you go to do the notarization if you don't want to send it out to them but that is in the that's pretty much the durable financial power of attorney in a nutshell how to create it and how to make some extra money off of doing that got it cool peace